Ladies and gentlemen, hello from Switzerland. Have you ever considered that the hourly billing system could be qualified as an innovation? And what is this term innovation all about? I would like to take you on a short journey on innovation and explain a little bit on a general term what it means and then adapt it to the legal market. I am Bruno Marcello. I am a professor of legal management at the University of St. Gallen in Switzerland. And now I will share the presentation I will go through with you in a second. Let's have a look and go back many years when the wheel was invented. Well, maybe not everybody was surprised or saw the value in this invention. When we go back only 100 years, more or less, you see in this picture, which was taken in New York, that horsepower was changed, how you move on a road. You had the classic horses still here circled in red, but the majority now was driving with cars. And at that time, the US commissioner of patents also said this famous sentence that everything that can be invented has been invented. Well, we know it better. And when we take, for example, this only, we realize that something has changed in the market of inventions. And keep that in mind because I would like to remind you on the smartphone a little bit later again. Now, why do I want to show you this with these inventions, because also in the legal market, there has been a change. Expectations have changed of business when they look to lawyers, and in particular, when they also look to general counsels. Because general counsels today are supposed to add value. They have actually to become strategic partner to business. And only with this short title, you realize that there are three terms in it, which didn't look familiar in the past, like value, not legal expertise, it's value. Then we talk about partnerships and we talk about strategy. But what is strategy all about? And I would like to give you a short overview on one slide, which we won't go through in detail. You can have a look into that a little bit later. Now you have on the left-hand side, the yellow pyramid, which shows you the key trends in the legal market. On the right hand side, you have the green um, strategy development process, which starts with a SWOT analysis on top, goes into a vision from there into strategy, and then you decide only then on the measures to take to implement the strategy. And of course, you control it every year. And how are these two connected? Well, the trends are actually the ones which need to be considered when you analyze the external environment. Now, coming back to innovation, let's put it a little bit into context with all the key terms you hear sometimes in this regard. Let's start with risk management. Risk is actually an umbrella term, and it stands for opportunities on the one hand side, but also for threats. Then we have the term of idea sometimes also in connection with invention. We have the term improvement, which is still not considered an innovation. And when we talk about innovation, it has become, well, actually standard, not to talk about normal innovations anymore. Everything has become a disruptive innovation today. All together with them, you need to keep in mind that once you do something, you want to move the needle somewhere. It will always have to do with change management. And we will look into that and the consequences also a little bit later. But let's stay now for a moment with the term innovation. What does innovation mean? <clears throat> innovation, of course, starts with an idea, maybe even a brilliant idea. And I'm sure you have every day hundreds of ideas. When you drive in the car, when you have a cup of coffee, maybe even on the shower. Now, but this is not sufficient yet. It does not lead to an innovation already. Because this idea 
needs to provide a value. That means it needs to satisfy a need in the market. Maybe you have been <clears throat> on an inventor um, place already where you have all these kind <clears throat> of nice in inventions. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> and where you think this is really cool. But at the end, they don't satisfy really a need in the market. So what comes on top is point number three. It means you need to execute on the idea and the need you have. It means the demand must be there and with a little bit of success, also a big demand, which leads to valuable sales. Now, all these three elements need to be in place to complete this term of innovation. And let's go back again to the first element, the idea. <clears throat> I said that even you have a brilliant idea, it won't be the end state of the innovation you implement in the market. Because an idea is often just simply the starting point only. And you have to continue to de develop this idea. You have to present it maybe to a steering committee or to your manager or to whomever. To, to get through. And you will for sure be challenged, which you won't find very attractive maybe. But it will motivate you to go into a redesign and go on and go on. And only at the very end, you will hopefully finally be able to implement this very first idea you had. Well, how many ideas are successful in the market? Unfortunately, only a few. Let's look into this idea funnel. You will see that from approximately 2,000 ideas, only 11 are a success, which means they have created some profit. It's less than 1% of success. And why is this the case? Because maybe over time, even brilliant ideas may die too early. And I promise you that I come back to the example of the smartphone. And I would like to ask you one question. When did you buy your first smartphone? Do you recall, have you been one of these early adopters because you are a kind of nerd, techie nerd, and you would like to have the tools always at the very beginning? Or were you hesitant, even suspicious? And said, eh, I will wait to see what happens here. So you were maybe even a laggard in this regard. Well, combining all this demand here, you will get this S shape in the market where you have more and more and more, which adopt this new idea which has been implemented in the market. And I would like to stay with this S curve because it helps me to lead ideally to the next idea. And the next idea is about this double S curve. And what does it mean? You may have today a successful business model here this red S. And you know this will come to an end somewhere. And it will come to an end even though you do improvements all the time. However, to survive and to be successful in the market as a company, you should start early in advance to implement the second S curve, which may be in this green middle part, you see it, cause also some tension. Maybe you cannibalize each other even. And I would like to refer you to this famous example, which everybody of us knows already with Kodak, where it was about deciding should we stay with analog cameras and or move to digital cameras already. History has proven already what would have been the right approach. Now talking about these business models, let me show you here a little bit of research we have done in St. Gallen. In St. Gallen, we have drawn this map, which shows you all the middle business models we have found. And indeed, it is about 55 business models, not more, not less. And we have found out that 90% of all the innovations we find with regard to business models are simple recombinations of these basic business models. That means 
at the end, when you talk about innovating some business model, it's not about art, but it's more about handicraft. And yes, this applies even to these famous examples we know uh, in the market here, which we consider um, a brilliant idea, but nevertheless, it has been actually built on these basic models as well. Now, next point, innovation. So far you are set, but what is a disruptive innovation? We talk about an innovation which is already a challenge enough, as we have seen, uh, to achieve. We talk about disruptive innovations when an innovation changes the entire market. That means for the legal market here, for example, that you have an impact on all the levels. So you have um, the entrance not only working on the lower level with high commas in the legal market, but they go also to the top law firms and they have changes and impacts there as well. So a disruptive innovation will always apply to the entire market and not just to be bits and pieces only. How do you do a disruptive innovation? Well, I would say this uh, you can't decide with your idea because the market will have decided only afterwards whether to implement it throughout all the levels only. Well, and now we come to this last uh, point which we discussed and addressed already. It's about change. Everything you change, be it by improvement, be it by an innovation, it will lead you all through this journey here of emotions. We are all human beings. We don't, as a principle, don't like so much changes. And as we see and we are actually, actually exposed to change, we go through this emotional um, valley and mountain uh, journey here. So you start, you are shocked. Maybe you deny and say, this is all nonsense. We shouldn't do it. You get angry because they continue. You start to negotiate, you fall into a depression, and then you approach again and accept it finally. The good news is, if you meet somebody who is really denying a good idea, he is, or she is even angry and starts to negotiate, it's a good sign, because this person is already on the journey. Let's have a look now quickly into the legal market, and what innovation means. We have realized that some five to 10 years ago, the term innovation got track into the market. We have seen indices and rankings. We have even talked about top 50 innovators in the legal market. And we have started to list all these innovations. So innovation became um, important also for lawyers and in the legal market. When we look now in a recent survey, which has been done in the US, we see, however, that compared, for example, to corporate legal departments, law firms seem to have more barriers to innovation. It's about the idea that they provide services and not, um, uh, it's not an industry, that they are rather a profession and not the business, even though they are called a firm. They are retrospectively oriented on case law. They look into specialization which moved them into a corner of becoming a mechanic and less a strategic person. Maybe combined with a little bit of uh, risk aversion, this leads that you get into a, a view of a tunnel and less on a broad generalist area. The billable hours system, which actually punishes you to become more efficient. Uh, Investments, funding, we see it also here in this chart that there is no funding available because everything is distributed at the end of the year. So partners today need to decide whether they would like to invest today so that partners tomorrow can benefit of it. Then we have terms about independence, rules of professional conduct, and also self-regulation in the market, which may hinder innovation in the legal market. Now, there is also a flip side to it, because in the last years, I have read headlines 
where law firms talk about an innovation space. They launch legal innovation labs. They launch innovation crowdsourcing platforms across the entire firm. They even claim to spend 20% of the billable hours on innovation. And they set up global innovation committees to act as a focal point for legal tech. Now, is innovation, is it all about technology? Is this actually the result and the solution for innovation in the legal market? Well, we could look, for example, into um, the legal startup activity and see how many new startup companies have been funded and uh, entered into the market. Could be one view. Here in particular, often you see these legal tech suppliers. Or you could go into this chart, which I love very much, actually, of clock. And you will see that technology also is one of the pieces of these core 12 elements they address. But it's not all about technology. You can do innovation in all these places. So that means innovations happen everywhere, on products and services, on processes and techniques, in organization, business models, you name it. You can innovate everywhere. Said that, I hope I have provided some new food for thought for you. Maybe you are even a little bit incentivized now to try to do a little bit more of innovation then I would have achieved my goal uh, with you. And I would like to wish you now good luck on your innovation journey. If you, if you would like to stay in touch with me, please connect with me over LinkedIn, send me an email, or maybe we meet someone in the future um, in person. Thanks for watching this video and bye-bye from Switzerland.